again. <laughs> Just take a just take a seat. Times the uh, time the entrance perfect. You okay? There you go. If you, you can take a seat for now. Uh, so we uh, timed the walk right because if you can hear the rain sta I just started. <laughs> I was thinking you might start speeding up as you're walking a little bit. <laughs> So good afternoon everyone and on behalf of the Powys Registration Service may I offer you all a big warm welcome to the beautiful Powys countryside. Obviously I'm biased, you know, this is, uh, this is where I'm from so it's a beautiful place to be. Even on a day like today it's still stunning. <laughs> so here we are at Garth Barnes for the wedding of Joe and Fionn and they are here today to affirm their love and publicly declare their commitment to each other and uh, they're very pleased that all of you could be here to witness this happy occasion. My name is Tom Harmon and I will be conducting the ceremony today and beside me is my colleague Angela Mann who has the very important job of legally recording this marriage as a, uh, as a record. So this place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriage. And we are here today to witness the joining in matrimony of Joseph Thompson and Fionn Fairfield Dawson. It's like a crash in here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the part where we, can't, we usually want uh, quiet so there's no confusion. I have to ask the important question that if any person present knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage, they must declare it now. That was perfect quiet, just at the right time. They were tempting you, seeing if they could worry you. So we're now going to begin with a reading by Lerin. So if I can get the two of you, um, you can just sort of, if you want to stand yeah, to the yeah. side, we'll stand over here. And we've got a reading, I'll move out the way of uh, the cameras. This is taken from Captain Corelli's mandolin. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like volcanoes and then subsides. Mm. And when it subsides, you have a decision to make. You have to work out whether your roots have so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part. Because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness. It's not excitement and the promulgation of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any fool can do. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burnt away and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots that grow towards each other underground, and when all the pretty blossom have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. That's a lovely reading to start us off. So now we begin the ceremony. So, you guys ready? ready? This is where the important bit starts. <laughs> so it has been a long tradition in many parts of the world for the bride to be given away to the groom. So today, the bride's father and stepfather will perform this very important duty. So if I can ask Tom Fairfield and uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Roberts to just stand up. Now I turn to you and I ask you, Tom Fairfield, and Christopher Roberts, do you give your daughter Fionn in marriage today to Joseph? Yes. Thank you very much. It's good to have an affirmative. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, a little bit too firm actually. I've <laughs> been waiting for that. Yeah, go, yeah. Time. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, we're gonna start you off with a nice easy question. Could you please state your full name? Joseph Mark Thompson. And Fionn, could you please state your full name? Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. Now this marriage ceremony will be quite short, but this in no way lessens its validity, its legal commitment, or the great importance that it has to you both. Before you are joined in marriage, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows that you are about to make. 
Marriage in this country means the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others. But further, marriage is a lifelong commitment that will provide the love, the friendship, help and support that each of you may require in your lives together. Now I'm going to ask each of you in turn to declare that you know of no lawful reason that you cannot be married. So Joe, if you please repeat these words. I declare that I know. I declare that I know. Of no legal reason. Of no legal reason. Why I, Joseph Mark Thompson. Why I, Joseph Mark Thompson. May not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage. To Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. To Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. And Fionn, I declare that I know. I declare that I know. Of no legal reason. Of no legal reason. Why I, Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. Why I, Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. May not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage. To Joseph Mark Thompson. To Joseph Mark Thompson. And therefore, Joe, will you take Fionn to be your wedded wife? Will you love, honour and cherish her? I will. And Fionn, will you take Joe to be your lawful wedded husband? Will you love, honour and cherish him? I will. So now the solemn and important moment has come for Joe and Fionn to exchange their vows and contract their marriage before their witnesses. So for this part of the ceremony, would all the guests please stand? So first of all, we're going to say the legal vows. So Joe, if you'd please repeat these words. I call upon these persons. I call upon these persons. Here present to witness. Here present to witness. That I, Joseph Mark Thompson. That I, Joseph Mark Thompson. Do take thee. Do take thee. Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. And Fionn, I call upon these persons. I call upon these persons. Here present to witness. Here present to witness. That I, Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. That I, Fionn Dawn Fairfield Dawson. Do take thee. Do take thee. Joseph Mark Thompson. Joseph Mark Thompson. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. So the exchange of rings is the traditional way that we seal the vows that we make to one another today. The wedding ring being an unbroken circle symbolizes the unending love that you have and is the outward sign of the lifelong promise that you are making to one another today. So if I can get first, because um, you've written your own vows, so if I can get the exchange of the of, uh, Fionn's vows for a bouquet. Fantastic. And then I believe we have the rings. So if I can get you to both take uh, the rings yeah, if you take each other's, that's, yeah, with no denying which one's which. <laughs> so, we're going to start with uh, Jo giving Fionn. So, if you'd like to take her left hand, place that halfway on. There you go, you can push it all the way. It's good if it's a tight fit, it means it's not coming off. And if you'd like to seal work those with your own personal uh, vows. I promise to love and care for you. I will honest, always be honest with you, kind and patient. But most of all, I promise to be a true and loyal best friend to you. <laughs> Thank you. Which one's your left? That's yeah. my left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, squeeze it over the knuckle. <laughs> I promise to be your lover, companion and friend. I will be your comrade in adventure, your accomplice in mis mischief, your comfort in disappointment, your strength in times of need and your partner in all things for all the days of my life. Thank you. Lovely. So, you cannot, yep, yeah, you got them. Yeah, no pockets in dresses. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe and Fionn. You have both made the declarations that are prescribed by law and you have made a solemn and binding contract with each other today in the presence of all your witnesses. So it is with great pleasure that I can declare that you are a husband and wife. Congratulations and may you kiss if you wish. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, is that a Dawson signature? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had to change the signature, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Those little menaces. <laughs> oh, so Robin's missed it all then. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> At least she's got the video. <laughs> I heard, a, I heard, a, I heard a lot of noise. <laughs> Sophia and Joe, you have said the vows and you have signed the schedule. So now, all that's left for me to do is, with great pleasure, I can present to your guests for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> Done now. Yeah, we're husband. going fishing now. No, we're not going fishing now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that went all right, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't fluff myself, the lines I did, too I much. Did, I did. <laughs> you nearly started blubbering. I know. I nearly did. Because they all set me <laughs> off before. Love you. Mm. Love you. Oh, I missed you. Did you sleep last night? No, literally like two hours. <laughs> Nightmare. I didn't get much. Did it's, so, it's so noisy, like, so it's down below. I thought you meant to tell me that you were... You want a milk? Come on, let's get you a milk, because that's really important. You want some milk. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. I love you, Dan. Okay. <laughs>
Thanks, mate. <laughs> I've got to finish. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Tom. I'm Fionn's dad. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here today to celebrate the wedding of Fionn and Joe. Um, all be a bit later, a year later, actually, than planned. Um, but at least it wasn't going to beat them this time, the C word, we'll just call it that. Um, so and I'm sorry for any minor inconveniences due to the COVID, but things are what they are. So uh, for those of you staying here for the wedding weekend, you will have found breakfast baskets in your rooms thoughtfully prepared by Fion. The meat eaters amongst you, at least one of these two ladies, a few ladies here anyway, um, will have found sausages and bacon and hopefully you tucked it all into them this morning. Uh, this produce comes from a farm in Bucking Buckinghamshire, which Fionn um, used to visit as a child. Um, I was deliberating about telling you a story about her getting tracked, tracked in by a large number of piglets, <laughs> but uh, I decided the whole thing might get a bit messy, so we'll, we'll move on to something else. Uh, so my thoughts then moved to the time that she disappeared off with Bob Geldof, um, only to reappear, I think it was a good hour, hour and a half later, she reappeared with Bob Geldof and some of the Boomtown rats eating large ice creams. Uh, a friend of mine said to me, he said, well, if she does go missing, everybody will know where to look for her. But anyway, um, and actually this wasn't the only time that she disappeared with the famous. Uh, an African storyteller who I'd met previously asked if Fionn would like to have a story told her um, after her stage show was finished. And Fionn always dead keen for a story. Um, remember we used to sit in the big bear chair and read about big bear and little bear? Anyway, Fionn was duly taken for a story in the green room by this charismatic lady. Um, after a little while, I had a peek round the curtain to see what was going on, and there was Fionn sitting in the middle of the sofa with Michael Burke on one side of her and Roy Hattersley on the other, and they were all wide-eyed at this animated African storyteller who had just reached the point in her story of a hungry lion and they all just sat there wide eyes absolutely hilarious I wish I'd had a camera but I didn't <laughs> anyway mention of animals Fionn as you all know loves loves animals and I particularly enjoyed her helping me to feed rehabilitating wild otters and our visiting the new forest zoological park where she assisted me with some of the research I was doing on pine martins and polecats. So, Joe, don't be surprised to get a visit to the zoo in the next few days, because <laughs> I know you're going to... You already tried to get me on the zoo on the honeymoon. Oh, right, yeah, that's, where, that's what I meant. Yeah, that's where you're going. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, look, I like to keep these things brief. Joe, I'm glad to have you as a son-in-law. And um, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses to the newlyweds. Bride and groom. I think you're next in line, aren't you? Thank you very much, mate. All the best. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on behalf of Heather and myself, I'd like to welcome you here finally for the marriage of Joan and Fionn. Right. How do we do that then? Well, I'll just hold it closer to me. Hold it closer to me. Right, okay. Where was I? Now you've lost oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have I finished? Have I finished? <laughs> 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 Have I finished? Have I finished? We'll start again. <laughs> Lady, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, firstly, on behalf of Heather and myself, I would like to finally welcome you all here to celebrate the marriage of Fionn and Joe, and to welcome Joe into our little family. Well done, mate. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Max for getting Joe here on time. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Joe for getting Max here on time. <laughs> he wasn't on time. <laughs> Five hours late. <laughs> I'd also like to thank all the lovely bridesmaids, flower girls, page boys, and ushers. Well done, everybody, because you've all done us proud. Well done. 
I can honestly say I've never been to a wedding where there were so many bridesmaids, flower girls, <laughs> bridesmaids, boys, and ushers. Good Lord. <laughs> um, no, I have lost my place now. Yeah. Okay, start again. Now I can say now, I really have had a pleasure and the privilege watching Fionn grow and blossom from the little girl in nappies through school into a stroppy teenager in, cap <laughs> in capital letters. <laughs> and we were going to give you a few examples, but by God, we haven't got time. And um, no, I, yeah, I'm going through from the stroppy teenager into the beautiful young lady that you see before you today. Because let's be fair. Oh, you just stole me. <laughs> no, because to be fair, if, I'm sure you all agree, she looks absolutely stunning today, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah. To be fair. place now completely um, I'd like to say also that she's a very kind and caring person throughout the lockdown of last year she did her own shopping family shopping she did our family shopping and she did Nana Betty's family shopping as well didn't she you know and that was a big job wasn't it kid and she kept us all safe at the same time so thank you ever so much for that darling we love you dearly I tell you uh, we're very proud of you Faye not just for what you've achieved at work but also your lovely family, Lily and Robin. They are both a testament to you, both you and Joe's dedication to them, to which you should both be very proud. As well as being kind and sharing, she's also very good at sharing. Ain't you kidding? Housework, ironing. <laughs> Joe, a little bit of advice for you, mate. When you're right, don't say anything. When you're wrong, just keep quiet. <laughs> and now, I'd like to wish you both all a very long and happy marriage. And ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom. The bride and groom. Hi everyone, thanks to everyone for coming. I know some of you have made quite substantial journeys to get here, and for others with the current climate, it's been quite difficult to make the decision. So we are thankful for each and every one of you. There are sadly a few of us who are not here today, and to those, our thoughts go out to them. As we know, we, we, know, we each know how much they would have wanted to be part of our special day. Fee, as expected, you look absolutely amazing, and everyone's eyes are on you today. I'm so proud of you. You're the kindest mother, the hardest worker, and the glue that holds our family together. You put so much effort into today. The attention to detail and the amount of handcrafted items you've made is mind-boggling. <laughs> Towards the end, I was even roped into dismantling my shed to, um, <laughs> to make some of the things you see today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud to be your husband, especially now you can fulfill your promise of making me sandwiches for my lunch every day, <laughs> which you always said you'd only do if we were married. <laughs> so good luck with that. And I hope the, I hope the book of recipes I got you earlier comes in handy. <laughs> to Lily and Robin, your mum and I are extremely proud of you, and it's amazing to see how much you love each other. You two are the most important things to us, and we love you so much. Today's a special treat, so make the most of eating the cakes and sweets, because it ain't going to last past the weekend. <laughs> so thanks again for everyone for coming. Um, thanks again for everyone who's made an absolutely monumental effort in food, flowers, and uh, all the other arrangements. Um, it's plenty of food and drink, so uh, if you'd raise a glass with me to family, good health, and a beautiful bride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Well
don't shout at me too much, Max. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me in the bargain seats outside? <laughs> right. Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I am Joe's best man. He chose me to be his best man because I'm his one and only friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Joe now for nearly 18 years, and it has been a pleasure to call him one of my best mates, even when he went through a slight period of looking like a creature from Chester Zoo, <laughs> which, if you go out into the pool room, there's an actual photo of him with dreadlocks or some type of hairstyle out there. Joe is someone I believe to be one of the luckiest men alive. He had a six pack during a period of time where he'd spend 12 hours a day paying Call of Duty and his mum was feeding him cakes just before he joined the Royal Marines. They told him he was too skinny and he needed to gain a bit of weight and well, he didn't. He's also someone I'm pretty sure had a six pack on his first baby scan, which yeah, is quite an achievement. Um, and those of you who arrived yesterday would have seen this evidence. <laughs> it's quite daunting. <laughs> In the true testament of this belief that Joe is an incredibly lucky man, he managed to find someone who is not only beautiful, but scarily organised and absolutely perfect for Joe. That's not me, it's Fee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I never thought anyone would tame the sloth like you did, and he's a better man for it. And I'm sure everyone will agree, you are a perfect couple. I'm meant to go, oh. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the bridesmaids, who have been very welcoming, um, and have put up with me today, and a bit yesterday, and the lads, Dan, Dan, Dean, and Charles, who came on the stag do. We did that in COVID lockdown rules, and it was pretty good, pretty good. Um, I'd also like to thank the lads for carrying Joe home from the pub when he passed out drunk. <laughs> he, he, did a, he, he, he definitely made right and proud that day. Um, it's short, it's sweet, and lastly, I would like to raise a toast to the beautiful couple who have had to wait so long for this day. So if everyone could raise their glasses to the new Mr. and Mrs. Thompson. That's it.